All right, what's good, YouTube? So we get to test the new abilities on PTR, Public Test Realm for Season 6 in Diablo 4. And today I'm going to show you the Mighty Throw ability on Barbarian, the ranged Barbarian. This is Pit Tier 82, which is equivalent of about Pit Tier 170 on the live version. Not in terms of difficulty, but in terms of just uh, the tiers, because the max tier is 100 in Season 6. And this build is by far from maxed. So many things missing here. I don't even have 10% of the 2 ender because I bricked it and uh, on gloves as well. So this build, this build does not, right now this current version that you see on the video does not have fully, a full uptime on Berserking. Uh, Berserking is the biggest thing for Barbarians, so yeah. Also limiting boards to 5 boards only is pretty rough in terms of clips and just everything. So I had to drop Carnage, so I dropped that, but there's other stuff to look at. And I'm still experimenting with the right setup and whatnot. My highest hit was 89 million when the stars aligned with Ramladni and just uh, max resource, but it was with Banish Lord Amulet. It's also possible to use it on this build, but I was pretty lucky with my amulet. Now we stack in Web Mastery damage tempers on the on the build, but we mainly stack vulnerable. We are not doing crit damage like most barbs you see because vulnerable uh, or crit damage makes no sense on this build. Vulnerable is because they are, I'm gonna show in the passives. With every throw, you make enemies vulnerable. So you have perfect 100% uptime on vulnerable. Whether with crit damage, you would need to get 100% crit chance, which is, you know, not ideal, I would say. And I'm not even using Grandfather because I cannot afford to use three unique weapons. Right now, I'm using two, which is third mate on Ramaladi. Uh, because of the tempers, there's a tempering for Mighty Throw to double hit chance. Uh, now we could probably have it only on one two-hander and just if you have a max roll and triple, triple master work it but because there is nothing else to put in there instead but i would rather put double throw on both two-handers and master work weapon mastery on, on, all, all the way level three's master works because that number is, is super high in two-handers right now i only proc it once and it goes up to 380 percent on one two-hander weapon mastery damage is just insane and ridiculous and this skill with third blade bl with third blade weapon, this skill has two labels, both weapon mastery label and core label. So I'm using Unbridled Rage. I'm able to sustain Unbridled Rage with this weapon non-stop spamming it. Thanks to perfect uptime on ancients, called the ancients, as you can see. The cooldown I have on ancients is nine seconds. It, it appears to be the lowest you can get. Um, because the uh, they made it so you can put points in skill or in ultimate skills, and with that you will lower their cooldown, which is uh, something I didn't expect, and th that does not interfere with cooldown reduction cap. It goes beyond. So on live version, the lowest of the ancient cooldown you can get is eleven and a half seconds, and on PTR you can get nine seconds. It looks like, but yeah, uh, let's take a look what we got going on here in the pit eighty two. Now, obviously, it all depends on the pit, on the layout, on the mobs, and the packs and whatnot. I think I should play different. I should seek elite packs, which I did not really do in this run, so it took a bit longer. I was just wasting time on these normal mobs, which uh, I should not have done. But we got spiders here, which is pretty good for the gain on the thing Majigi. But I'm going to fast forward to the boss fight. Uh, I was pretty lucky with Dead Mother. Dead Mother is pretty alright boss. I did finish this run with over 5 minutes left, so I can totally push higher. With fully decked out everything, I'm pretty sure this build could do tier 100, the max pit, if you get everything like perfectly lined up, which I don't. And of course, you would need leveled glyphs. Uh, in this footage, I had like 2 glyphs at level 60, and the rest was below that, at level 50 something, I think. So they're still like 40 levels behind on uh, the glyphs, right? The levels, and then it does a lot. It, it scales through the roof. There's this new glyph for Barbarian called Challenger. And um, that one increases like percentage-wise normal loads. And I'll show you in a, in a second. This is ridiculous. That right there gives you like... Uh, I am almost 5,000 strength on this build. 5,000. Uh, I do have greater graphics and strength on items. On three items though. I was pretty lucky with those. But uh, yeah. 4.6,000. Actually, I'm lower strength now because I am using two emeralds in gear for crit chance. I, wore, uh, I don't have crit chance on amulet. Sadly, I wasn't lucky enough to drop one. So I had to compensate with some gems on the armor. But I don't even... So with crit chance, it will be even much better for sustain with Wrath Glyph and also with damage, obviously. It seems like multipliers, like the scaling with vulnerable, overpower, and crit damage is pretty high considering the stat squish. So 
pretty interesting. Uh, but yeah, let's take a look what we got here. And then I'll show you in the planner what we got for this build going. What's the setup like? Also missing a lot of Paragon points, as you can see. So the max level character is level 60. And from level 60, you level Paragon points. So with Renown completed, I believe you start at 225 or 230. But with the new zone, but the new zone is locked. So uh, you can see me, I'm missing like 70 points, Paragon points. Now in the planner, as you can see, easy clap. We also got ring double J, which is not bad at all. So that's good. That's good. Anyways, with the planner right here. So I did put the perfect masterwork so you can get on the items here, which I don't have in game. So keep that in mind. Oh, I forgot the Shaco. I do have a triple cooldown on Shaco and Daryl's Might. Best thing is damage reduction triple. These two pieces are very mandatory. As you could see, I could tank everything even triple debuff stacks on the last boss so this build is insane with sustain with tankiness i would say damage is also very good now i don't have edge masters i'm thinking of putting edge masters in of retribution because of the uptime mobs having a higher hp with higher tiers on the pits uh higher scaling the retribution be, uh, or like mobs became become unstoppable so retribution doesn't work this aspect so I'm thinking of swapping to Edge Masters, but anyways, let's take a look at the gear. We got the Harlequin Crest, the uh, Mythic Unique. We got Terrell's Might and her Bad Boy. And now we have a passive that every spending fury we get healed. This is very good for sustain on Terrell's Might. Retribution on the gloves. I'd have ranks to core skill, crit chance, and strength. I would probably want attack speed or even vulnerable. I'm still not sure if stacking, stacking strength or uh, pure vulnerable is better. Uh, I got this because I don't have the stuff. Now we need Berserk and Duration on gloves which i don't have in the footage that's what i'm missing that's why i was unable to keep at it 100 time uptime retribution aspect damage to stunt enemies our throw stunts with each hit so that's pretty insane for a stagger on the boss as well now this aspect does like, activate on boss when it's staggered which is the blue bar so keep that in mind air it's bearing for the clone reduction on ancients and overall pretty good stuff um mew might no i mean nah you still need that we are literally using this only for the ancients cooldown, so not sure we might be able to get away with it, but it's just a high number on these boots, uh, on the pants. Yen's Blessings, amazing boots, very mandatory because we get Razor's Generation, which is very much needed with Unbridled Rage, but also the effect on the boots, right? Um, this will auto-cast your shouts. It will, it will not cast mobility, non-mobility and non-ultimate skill is what's being cast. Now we get Leap, which is mobility skill, and Call the Engines, it's ultimate. So it's strictly only shouts for these boots. Very good stuff. Two-hander and Crouching Wrath. Pretty funny thing, this aspect does not work on live server, but it does work on PTR. Crazy. Absolutely amazing. My throw with Starless Sky activated is 35 Fury. So every fourth cast... I'm able to activate this and I am pretty sure that this double chance hamper does count as a I'm not sure though no probably not no 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 never mind you don't spend fury if you double proc might throw I don't know but at every fourth attack you will be able to trigger this aspect which is 160% damage increase multiplier on a two-hander max life vulnerable strength might even drop max life or something else uh, on my other one-hander that I used to roll with Tunet version, which uh, you can see in my last run. Also, by the way, also here, this is a Tunet version right here. And this is doable from Lani. There's another Earthquake Dot I'm going to try out with Weapon Throw, which is not well updated, but I might try it out once we get the NPC that maxes everything out. Vulnerable the gems in the, in, the gi, in the weapons. Now we will get access to Rune Wards today as well, so that will be changed. I will make updated video and set up with this, uh, with this bad boy, so we'll see. We got Ramalani here, max resource, third blade to make our weapon throw a core skill so we can spam it. Enter to enter, we want the aspect for mighty throw. I don't even have this maxed out. I'm actually missing 10% on this aspect on the footage. So yeah, same story as other to enter. This will bring us to 100% chance to uh, double cast mighty throw. Even without masterworks, it doesn't show correctly on this planner, but it's doubled on two enders. So with Masterworks, it doesn't show Masterwork ranks either. It will be more than that. Starless Sky, we got the ring here with Bolt Chieftain. Very good stuff. A must-have. Great chance, attack, speed, strength, and other great stuff. Rizzo's Generation, very needed. And on Amulet, we are going with um, Limitless Rage. Each, you know, that's for core skill damage. Now, if there are any barbs, any professionals, back then, 
stacking core skill damage as an affix on weapons, which is gone now, but we have tempering. It used to double dip with Unbridled Rage. Same with this aspect. Uh, if anyone knows if that's still true, then maybe instead of Weapon Mastery tempers, we should be going for core skill. But that's, that's uh, half. So core skill goes to 60%, Weapon Mastery 120%. Not sure, but I was lucky with Code Offensive Amulet with Strength Percentage. Now Strength Percentage or any main stat got buffed. It goes up to 30% with no GA on Masterworks, which is crazy. And then the damage should be crit chance. I don't have that though. That was the gear. Now the skill overview, we could triple shouts with Leap for you know gap close. We always want to be on top of mobs uh, because the range throw has an animation before it flies to the target. You know, that's some time. So if you hug the uh, mobs... Uh, so yeah, this is basically a melee build, if you will. All well, the engines for the insane attack speed and damage increase, 25% X, as you can see, multiplier, and also insane fury generation. As you can see, this uh, second engine Coralic. And also chance to stun right there from uh, Madauk. Mighty Throw, the classic main ability. It gives us 25% attack speed as well. And then also impact 200% multiplier. So that's why we want to stack everything up every multiplier as much as we can skill overview first two points doesn't matter just to access core skills we want to go with warpath because we do have bone breaker guaranteed of power every 12 seconds this is up for a six seconds so every eight seconds you will have uh, this basically max fury for ramaladni scaling hp increase damage reduction rallying cry the classic for resource generation Challenging Shout, I do not put point in max life because I hate that this passive always lowers your HP pool with Fortify. Your Fortify gets lowered. So if you don't have full HP or a full Fortify on your full you know, health bar, then uh, your counter offensive will not activate as well as the damage reduction while Fortified, which can be very crucial in these high pits. Max out Warcry with some Power Warcry. Booming Voice for the uptime. If we need more sustain in, term in terms of defensives, I will put three points in Garaliel. Which is another great stuff. Uh, or aggressive resistance, more points, one more, right? Leap just for the fury here. Scooby our initiator for the fury if you need. Quality fury, very important. This also you know hinders me because I have no uh, I don't have perfect uptime on this skill. On this uh, on berserking, I mean. Battle fervor is very good to you know uh, sustain berserking. If you have if you don't have problem berserk uptime, if you have berserk duration on gloves, you might even drop this. Now, this is the passive, how we make mobs non-stop vulnerable. This is hands down top-notch, right? So, yeah. Playing Strike, Pit Fighter, more damage and damage reduction. Max out Mighty Throw. Always go for a Warrior Mighty Throw because the multiplier is too high. If you go with the other one here, you will not deal enough damage. Counter Offensive maxed out. And this will guarantee us always fortified. 10% of max life with one point. If you, put, if you max this out, it's 30% fortify. With one throw. That's just ridiculous. This might probably get nerfed. Johnny, uh, call the ancients. You want to max these out if you... Oh, hold up. I should miss something. We want to do it like this. And last point, like here. Perfect. So you want to max this out for the glow reduction. We are not, not really using this for ancients to do damage. And then we got Invigorating Fury. This is the heal. Every 100 fury spent. So every third cast, he will trigger this on Mighty Throw. Umbral Rage for damage increase. Top notch. Argon Board. The first one we got is Wrath here for the crit chance, uh, crit strikes journey fury. This does apply into resource generation, so you will get even more than three. Second board, we go warming her because of the max free nodes here for Ramaladni. And here I slept Ire. Now, Ire is not needed if you temper berserking on your items like two hander or gloves. If you're on Carnage, you don't need Ire at all. You just slap Marshall and Carnage or Ambidextrous, you're done. But I did not, I wasn't, like, I don't have any Berserking tempers on 200 on weapons because I break them. So I am forced to run Ire. If you don't need Ire, if I, I'll probably get rid of this Glyph, I would put Ambidextrous. But uh, I would basically swap out Exploit with Ambidextrous on these boards. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Or I might keep, no, no, I will keep Ambidextrous here because damage while fortified scales pretty well with Bonebreaker board. So, yeah. Next up, we got the Blood Rage for Berserking. And now this is the new Glyph Challenger. It gives you bonus to all normal loads up to 624%, I believe it is. And
and this is just ridiculous like the amount of strength points in here and other nodes like willpower and dexterity which is very important for crit chance dexterity and willpower is very good in general for any bar build because willpower is resource generation but also overpower and healing received which goes well with the passive i just talked about insane another board a very important decimator that's why we want guaranteed overpower and we non the vulnerable so we have this uh, extra node you know extra damage increase extra vulnerable as well in here now you still see 75 remaining points this is up to you where you want to put them it doesn't matter you can max everything out uh, i will probably go for damage reduction here for some hp as well and try to make max these glyphs and whatnot so we get martial in this decimator to buff the magic nodes of vulnerable because we're scaling that right some physical and the last board here is bone baker guaranteed overpower and we put the exploit for even more of vulnerable good stuff Heritorial Glyph also has a legendary bonus where right? it gives you vulnerable damage multiplier. It shows, it shows X should be multiplier. I might test it, but I need to level it first. So this is the setup we are working with. And the points, like I said, where you want to put them, it's up to you. And consumables, I use crit chance, crit damage potion. Even though we don't skill crit damage, I need the crit chance to proc Wrath Glyph because with that potion, with this setup I have on the video, it was 75% crit chance, I believe. So... And also have like emeralds, but you know, like these gems is it's up to you. If you are don't struggle with great chance, if you're lucky to get a great chance on amulet, you don't need emeralds on the amulet. How the rotation works? You basically go, you always first get gold the ancients out because if you put that, you will get increased attack speed and damage and stuff like that, and then you will buff yourself and them with shouts. Why we want to do that is because shouts because of martial glyph will reduce the cooldown of your other skills by two seconds for each shout. So this is six, six second cooldown from the shouts on the Goldie Ancients. Very good stuff. And they last six seconds. So you actually have three seconds surplus with this build. I tried the new headpiece, Perdition, new mythic, which is amazing for damage, but it does not work because the 54% cooldown reduction Harlequin Crest gives you with character graphics is just way too good. Or 44% without GA. That's why. And then just spam your life with Mighty Throw. Very good stuff. Keep in mind, like it might seem out of enough attack speed, but keep in mind that ancients give you 20% attack speed. And this weapon is 25%. This is 45% attack speed from these two. So yeah. And we have this up non-stop. But anyways, I think I covered everything. I stream every day on Twitch and YouTube. You guys can check me out. We can talk about the good stuff and whatnot. Or the updates. Um, I will definitely try to max out my plan is to go for a hammer of the ancients because of the new tempers and some other builds like charge or brawling build with the ground stomp so i'm excited about that very much and yeah until next time you guys take it easy thank you very much for watching enjoy and good luck until next time peace